wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is Steve from Adisa with the latest in the ITAD in 15 uh, webinar series. I'm joined today by Andrew Crager, who's uh, an industry stalwart, really. And we'll talk about a little bit about Andrew's background in a minute, but we're going to talk specifically about Scope 3. And the reason for putting this on is that Andrew and I sat on a panel. Andrew was the MC uh, in the summer. And Andrew just made one throw throw a comment about Scope 3 reporting and the opportunity for ITAD that I thought was fascinating. So we're going to really explore that and see if his insight and knowledge can help us come up with some ideas for our own businesses. So Andrew, welcome. Thank you for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve. Grateful to be here. Um, for those who may not be familiar with you, give us a little bit of a background to, to your experience in the sector, please. Yeah, well, certainly appreciate the opportunity and um, you know, a little bit on my background. Um, I started my technology career back in 1997 at CDW. I love saying when they were only a billion dollar company uh, because now they're a massive behemoth and um, kind of move up the, the corporate ladder there for a number of different years, got exposed to a bunch of different technologies before relocating to Arizona, uh, managing five states for Insight Enterprises out here, and then got into more advanced technologies, cybersecurity, as well as data center. And at that time, I, I love the technologies being able to truly affect uh, business operations and understanding the impact that they had on business. And consequently, what I love sharing about that background is, you know, if you're like me, you know, many times you don't think about what happens with this technology, you know, at the end of a useful life. It's always kind of what's next in terms of technology refresh. So when I was recruited into this space by Blanco, consequently, I'd worked with the CEO at a cybersecurity company. Um, he told me a little bit about the space and did a very poor sales job, you know, bringing me on board. And uh, I was like, oh, that sounds horrible. Why do I want to deal with people's garbage? Uh, it's kind of the way that I viewed it. But, you know, once you kind of get exposed into this industry, um, I absolutely love it. Um, it's the most complex, nuanced, um, you know, industry you can potentially be in. And not only that, the amount of impact that collectively we get to have on all of civilization, the entire world, um, is really unmatched to anything out there. Because, hey, it was one thing when I could go to a boardroom and say, hey, if you have this nice fancy storage you know, system, it's gonna impact your bottom line like this, you're gonna be able to manage your data. But never have I been in a position where if we collectively are doing our jobs correct, we possibly affect everyone out there, not only from a DISA standpoint of the data security, that's kind of the basic blocking and tackling, but the implications, we all know the data and the metrics as to what happens with e-waste, the impact on the environment, um, but we're starting to see that evolve. And that's what I love about our industry is it is evolving, right? So initially when I came into it, we'll call a card what a, a card a card, it was more or less a bunch of opportunists looking to yeah. buy you know, IT hardware and didn't care about the data security, didn't care about the environment, and ultimately it was how much money can I make off this? And there was certainly a time and place for that, but that's not the way we can show up in this industry today. More is being required of all of us, and it's really a collaborative effort where, hey, we shouldn't be kind of keeping these things close to this. We say, hey, collectively, how can we work together? Because we are really the stewards of not only the data management and security, but also the assets and kind of what happens downstream end of life with them, life cycle management. So it's one of the things I've gotten incredibly passionate about. I love speaking with people such as yourself and others in the industry and learning about this because again, for me, the impact that we gotta have is huge, right? And changing the game. It's no longer just talking to the IT managers and saying, hey, you know what? If you go through us, you're gonna get this amount of money back. And guess what? It's kind of off budget. You can go ahead and use this towards other projects that you know aren't kind of on the docket. And that's nice. And there's a place for that. But then consequently, you had the security side of it where you had the CISO saying, I don't want any data breaches, shred everything. They don't care about the environmental impact. Well, these days you have the C-suite that's involved and the C-suite saying, all right, we're a Fortune 500 company. My bonuses are tied to how we do ESG. So what do I need to do? And that's where we come into play. We have this opportunity now with the technologies that are out there, with what we do as an industry to say, hey, guess what? CISO, C-suite, IT manager, let's all have a seat at the table because there's a place for all of you. We can hit all your goals. And IT director, you can get the $100,000 value reclamation on your IT assets, but let's also talk about making you look good to your C-suite and let's understand what the impact is of that company's brand equity by operating correctly and you know evolving these. So that's where we get a partner and that's where we need to evolve to allow all these people 
to kind of hit their goals. So for me, we're at this incredibly exciting time where we have so much impact, but to truly have impact and change the game, we need to start acting differently and evolve ourselves. What a fantastic start. Brilliant, Andrew. I mean, set the scene for ITAD today brilliantly well there. Um, lots of different touch points with the customer, lots of different opportunity, but lots of different masks to wear. Now, of course, we're talking mm. sustainability today specifically. Um, I've been around IT a long time. We've heard of you know green IT back in the late 90s, I guess. Is the current push for sustainability sustainable IT a fad, do you think, or is this something that's really sticking? No, this is absolutely sticking, right? And I think we all kind of knew it to a degree. I mean, we see the implications. We're hearing more and more about the effect, you know, on the climate. And, you know, governments are now being called to action, right? So it's not just enough to say that you're sustainable. I think all of us in ITAD have known that what we do is sustainable, right? We're environmentally friendly to some degree. We work with, you know, Easter Roots. We work with R2. There's sustainability around it. But for the most part, it's a very general topic that we talk about. We just know that directionally we're sustainability. And we all see it in the algorithms. I mentioned in my post yesterday, we all see it in the algorithms on LinkedIn. It's repackaged, regurgitated sustainability by everyone. But if you kind of look at the shift that's happening, it's no longer just to say that we have to be more specific these days. So, you know, you're hearing all the, the marches to net zero, um, you know, carbon neutral, what the implications are. And then you have things like over in Europe, the European Green Deal uh, that's driving that carbon neutral by 2050. Um, you know, in California, we recently talked about, um, or they recently, you know, created SB 253, which means any company that's doing a billion dollars in revenue and does, you know, business in California is going to have to report on their overall GHG, greenhouse gases, um, and that includes scope three. You know, it's supported by tech titans like Apple and Google. So, you know, Europe always tends to kind of lead the way in these initiatives. The US is a little bit slower on the uptake, but eventually we do get there. And I think one of the things that, you know, if you guys aren't familiar with this, um, you know, throughout the course of my research, you know, I was at the Verge conference, which was incredible. Um, by the way, if you if you get a chance, check out Green Biz. So Green Biz is an organization that is really helping champion a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, sustainability, and you will see the traction that is getting by Fortune 500 companies, the end users, the people that we're working with. And there's so many different things you can learn there. But the one thing that I wanted to talk about is that there is the CDP Global. So I highly suggest you Google it because there's one thing to have government regulations. There's another to have kind of peer pressure being put on you by the entire industry. Um, and CDP stands for the Carbon Disclosure, uh, Disclosure Project. You know, they're 50, they're in 50 countries now, they're nonprofit. They are led by kind of industry titans that are kind of putting pressure on people and really making kind of the leaders, you know, um, out there disclose what their greenhouse gas emissions are, including scope three. So not only do you have government regulations, but you have entire industries, nonprofits putting pressure on people and people's brand equity is at stake. And when you have people that are looking at scope three emissions that are at the top of the food chain, well, guess what? That trickles downhill because scope three is indirect emissions, which comes from your corporate value chain, right? So what does that look like upstream? What does that look like downstream? Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, that's gonna be things such as not what you're directly consuming. And that's why scope one and scope two, it's pretty easy for people to get a hold of, right? But if you're not familiar with scope three, really that's more than 90% of emissions out there. And that's why people say, all right, yeah, it's complex, but you're seeing innovation, you're seeing tools that are out there, you're seeing um, you know, things like here in the US for people who don't have a grasp of this, it's always best to go ahead and quantify and find metrics for your own scope three. But if you can't, you, know, you can have some direction to where you can be at least directionally accurate. So the US EEIO stands for US Environmentally Extended Input Output. And what it does is it kind of quantifies things based on various categories in IT to talk what their you know, overarching kind of carbon footprint looks like. And so you have a lot of things that are not looking, that are not only looking to kind of support you, but you have pressure coming from both government and you know the industry. Um, so it's a groundswell that is yeah. only going to gain momentum. And it really represents an opportunity for us because part of scope three, is the end of life treatment of sold products, right? And this is going to start trickling upstream to the OEMs, right? So we've seen that, 
right now. And that's where we play. So that's exactly what we do. So we are a critical part of scope three and we touch these. So we have an understanding of what the ITA, of what the assets are that we're touching. And it's up to us to be able to deliver that data back because ultimately we help people hit their ESG initiatives. So let's just roll back a bit because it's brilliant, but you, you know such a lot. So I'm just going to try go back a little bit for people like me who aren't quite up to the same speed as you. So we're talking about mandated um, reporting requirements for business mm -hmm. today. Um, you've very eloquently um, answered my question. It's definitely not a fad. It's here to stay. It's actually only going to get more and more mandated globally because we know the environment that we operate in as, I guess, as a species, let alone as a business. And so we know this is something which is going to change. Um, to bring it back down to the content for today, scope three, um, you mentioned indirect emissions and a business having to report on that. What role do you see ITAD, which effectively is a facilitator, if you like, of extending the product life cycle? And so taking raw materials, CO2 generated during the manufacturing and distribution process and extending that life cycle so that it's, it's not ended by a destruction process. How do you see ITAD um, adding value to businesses when they're having to report? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think that's, um, you know, you have people that are doing this better. So the US EIO is part of it, right? But essentially what we do is we need to quantify the data. So a lot of times we'll talk about landfill avoidance. Yeah. That's great, right? But we also need to talk about circularity, right? So what's the reuse, repair, refurbish, um, recycle metrics look like? And then within that, we also need to look at the data. So what's the landfill avoidance? Yes, hazardous waste, but we also need to get into the, the precious metals, the rare earth elements, um, you know, rare earth elements, um, all those different things, the total raw materials. So we need to talk about mercury, arsenic, cadmium. Um, we need to talk about lead, gold, tin. And, you know, one thing that we all know right now in this industry, we know that basically 85% of this stuff is going to landfills today. So our job is to kind of educate the industry, but we now need to provide data back that can be ingested into corporate ESG programs. And, you know, what's fascinating to me is everyone's kind of looking outward. You know, it's almost like spirituality. Okay, quit looking outward, look inward. And people forget about their technology footprint and the implications there. So, you know, if we look at, you know, circularity, if we talk about the, you know, 97% of greenhouse gas, you know, emissions are reduced compared to landfill by going through, um, through ITAT, right? And what we can also start doing is looking at these assets by class to say, all right, what are the different elements herein? And when you get a, you know, when you actually go ahead and let's just say decommission a data center, what does that look like, right? So what are all these different elements that were in there that can be reported up into ESG programs, not just, you know, a big basic number as in this is how much, you know, we took and we prevented from going to landfills. We need to get more granular in that because that's what scope three is. And we can feed this data to them in a report. And some people are doing great jobs, you know, of this, right? I really haven't seen much in the way of scope three in this industry, yeah. um, but we do know there are some players such as like ERI, Reconnect, that are doing a great job you know, with circularity. Um, you know, one of the companies that I've seen do the best job is is really um, critical technology, um, you know, services. Um, they've actually come up with a carbon champ and what they've done is they've been spent countless hours and money looking at the assets that they bring in. And what you're able to do is not only look at the level of detail granularly in those assets, but what it also accounts for is, all right, what is the transportation? What's the logistics? Everything associated with bringing them that to our facilities and, you know, processing that. And ultimately, where does that end up downstream? Because, you know, if you're just kind of bringing it into your facility and then you're going through layers of brokers, that's inefficient. So you really want to have as much of a lean path to getting that to the ultimate end user and whatever that looks like. So it's, it's really interesting because we just take a little spin. We're, we're in the last depths of the session, if that makes sense. Um, so we're talking about data. We're not talking about a change in how we operate in terms of a practical perspective. It's actually realizing the value. Mm. And the value in this is knowledge and knowledge for, for us means reporting and having accurate attributable statistics to go back into our customers. Now, in your experience, in, and, and you are an independent, you said across uh, entities, are you seeing, how accurate are you seeing um, the attributable data for mm. um, ITAD to issue to their customers? 
Yeah. Is, is well, I think overall, a lot of people are making, um, you know, kind of best effort generic claims, so they don't necessarily know better, right? And that's why I specifically mentioned the US EEIO for, yeah. you know, people within the US. I'm sure that Europe and other places have probably kind of mimicked that. That was actually created by the Environmental Protection, you know, agency. Um, but you're exactly right. I think, you know, we've all heard of goals, right? All right, here's my goal, to be sustainable. But then you drill down and say, all right, what's your SMART goal? Make it specific, measurable, actionable. So it's now time that we actually start getting specific with our goals, specific with the data. Because guess what? There are platforms that these Fortune 500 companies, these end users are buying, specifically focused on ESG. So if all of a sudden you can say, hey, I'm an iTad that can give you the data and metrics to feed into your platform, that's a huge win for them. And hey, guess what? I don't care if you're $20,000 know, below bid on what you can provide that company for it. The, the value to their brand equity and making your IT, IT manager, IT director, whoever, look like a rock star to their C-suite, it's exponentially higher. So that's the opportunity that's, that's ahead of us when it comes to kind of scope three environment. And to your points, it, it's not perfect science today. It's a work in progress. Right. There's now so much attention on it because it's 90 percent of emissions. And that's why you have things that are coming to kind of help you out. So, yes, what we need to do is kind of take action and discover of our own volition. And maybe there's some industry sharing that we can do along those lines. But also, until you kind of get that improved, you can look at like the US EIO. Right. So yeah. it's really that's the challenge that's that's there for all of us. How can I provide specific actionable data so that when I go to a Fortune 500 company and say I can deliver this, it gets pumped in their ESG portal. They look good. They get credits. And then that's a messaging they get take out to, you know, their entire customer base. And I think. Thanks, Andrew. With 15 minutes isn't long enough, but we're up to time at the moment. But I'm just going to try and pull it together if I can, because there is a clear call to action that you yourself finished with there, I think, at mm. the end. Um, to summarize, this is sustainable IT is here to stay. Um, what it is is beginning to get formed. There's mandated reporting on businesses, so ITAD's customers. Um, there are some metrics now, EIO, um, which we're beginning to get more widely accepted. Um, we've gone back to some MIT stats, which I know Dell use as well as being a, a you know a, vi a viable source or verified viable source. So it's beginning to mature. It's not there yet, but nothing's perfect anyway. ITAD for me, and your words back at you, actually, if I may. Um, the opportunity is just to be aware of this change for the customer, and to be aware of the role that ITAD can play by doing nothing different operationally than it is today but seeing its importance changing, pivoting. It used to just be, again, just collect my old equipment. What money will oh. you give me for this? So brokerage, then it was data. How are you protecting my data? And now it's actually, what are you doing with it? You know, the genuine, proper disposition, where is it going? You know, what value are we giving to it in terms of a financial uh, return value? What, what value are we giving it in terms of a potential downside risk? And then what value from an ESG stroke sustainability, which ultimately will hit the bottom line as well, because there will be bottom line implications for those who aren't performing as the, as the decades go on. So the businesses or the industry as a whole is evolving and maturing, and you've been around for a long time as well. The hats that we wear used to be, you know, questionable, as you, you mentioned it, you know, your, your, your cap on. I'm going to come and collect it, mate, pull it down over your eyes so nobody sees as you drive away. And that was kind of the image that we had maybe 15 years ago, I guess. Um, it's now moved to being much more corporate facing. But the next move is to actually see the value in the bigger picture, the, I guess, the um, societal uh, picture that's going on right now, which is affecting change, change for how we do business and how we live our lives. And HIDAD has a key role to play in that as a facilitator of some of this data. Um, have you got any parting comments, Andrew? Because I've got a follow-up, which we stay on at the, when we finish this. I've got a follow-up idea yeah. for you. You know, I think, I mean, to your point, 15 minutes isn't enough, right? You've said so many things there that it's really kind of, um, you know, stoked my passion. I'd love to even get into the social implications and everything of this. Um, but, but to your point, you know, the game is changing, right? And, you know, we see people that are, you know, battling. I'm trying to outbid you for the cost of equipment. Well, quit doing that. 
change the game, understand who you're going to target. Are you talking to the VP of sustainability? Are you talking to the CMO? Um, you know, what are the implications? Have you looked at their ESG, you know, policies online and understand how I'm positively affecting that? And yeah, you know, it's, it's time to get professional. So, um, awareness, education, and here's the thing is we're so far not doing the greatest job. I mean, 85% still ended up in landfills, right? So, the opportunity is incredible for all of us. And guess what? AI, quantum computing, um, you know, augmented reality, the stuff that's coming down is massive. Um, you know, cobalt's going to triple in demand you know, over the next you know, couple of years. Um, so it's really important that we come together as a team and say, hey, 85% is unacceptable. How do we get in front of this? Right. Um, and then how do you really kind of set things in motion so that the demand India is now demanding all this stuff. Right. Um, you know, third world countries that traditionally have not consumed like, you know, first world countries. So we have to be laser focused on kind of what we're doing from data, from education, from processes, from collaboration. You know, you do see Siri now looking to stand up um, a sustainability, yes. you know, play. So. We're, we're moving in the right direction. And, you know, for each one of us that's on this call and in this industry, it's about getting on board, right? And understanding that the game's changing, the narrative's changing, who we approach is changing. And ultimately for me, it's about taking pride in what I deliver. This is an opportunity for us all to leave a legacy that is really kind of unmatched by so many people out there. You know, in short, we're saving the earth, you know, and potentially humanity. I'm gonna leave it on that. There's nothing more I can add to a statement that finishes like that. I will pick up on the Siri thing. That's what I note, noted down. I really want to do something with Siri on what their plans are with the sustainability uh, standard that's developing. That's that's the next piece, I think, for us to discuss. Um, Andrew, we're over time, um, but the content was brilliant. So thank you very much. The preamble, for those of you who want to know what industry in, just listen to the first five minutes of this piece. Andrew eloquently describes the industry really well, in my opinion. So thank you very much for your time today, sir. It's lovely to speak to you again. If you can stay on, we'll have a further chat. Um, for the listeners, thank you very much indeed. Uh, the recording of this will go up on the Media Centre in about a week's time once we've edited it. Any ideas that you have for content, please email uh, marketing at adisa.global. And thank you very much for taking part today. Enjoy your days, everybody. Bye-bye.